Hello and welcome to Larissa's Kitchen. I can't get enough bread. Today I'm tackling the holy grail of bread bakers, the baguette. This iconically shaped loaf of bread is one of the more difficult recipes to master. Let's see if I can manage it. Like so many of these bread recipes, it's not necessarily the ingredients that are different as much as it is the cooking method and shape. And baguette is no different. So I have my basic sourdough bread recipe, although we'll be using just a little bit extra flour to make this more bready. As always, the ingredients are listed over here, as well as the full recipe and instructions in the description box below. Let's put this baguette dough together. Okay, we're starting with a cup of active starter, but we need to stir it down because it can't have all the bubbles in it. Okay, now we can scoop out our cup. If you're weighing this, it's about eight ounces. If you're not completely convinced that your starter will raise a whole loaf of dough, you can add in yeast. That's one packet or about a tablespoon. I also have one and a quarter cups of water with one tablespoon of sugar dissolved in it. And this water's just room temperature. Just keep it running. I also have two full teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna whisk this together first. One of the ways you can tell if your starter will raise a whole loaf of dough is if you put it just a little bit in water and it floats, then it's ready. If it doesn't float, you'll need to add yeast. I'm also whisking in about two tablespoons of wheat gluten. If you use bread flour, you do not need to use the wheat gluten. For the flour, we're adding in between three and a half and four cups of flour. And again, I fluff and scoop rather than sifting. And my cups are about 140 grams. I'm starting with three and a half cups. And then we just mix this by hand until it forms dough. Then this is going on the mixer to mix. So I know this looks much drier, trust me, it'll be fine. And unlike the, the sourdough, we don't have to wait the 15 minutes. We'll be kneading this on low for probably five to six minutes. It should form a ball. Okay, you can see how much smoother this has gotten. That means it's ready to go. So we're putting this in a well-greased bowl. And this is still plenty sticky, so I do need to scoop it in here. And we're gonna turn this to coat. You can see how sticky it is. We don't want the top drying out while this rises. Like the sourdough, we're gonna let this rise twice. Now you can cover it with a dish towel or I'm just sticking it in my unheated oven. This is my baguette pan and I'm going to coat it with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. And it's okay that it oversprays on the granite because we will eventually spray the granite because I don't wanna add any extra flour. We need to set this aside while we work on the dough. 
Okay, this is my baguette dough after its second rise. Now, this is my granite. I don't wanna add any extra flour to this dough. So that's why I sprayed the nonstick cooking spray and it's okay that it's on here. I'm using my dough scraper. We need to divide this into three even uh, dough amounts. Okay, this one's pretty small, so I'm gonna take a little bit from here. Okay, and now we just need to roll these into our baguette shapes. So we're just gonna roll. Okay, now we need to twist them in opposite directions, and then this is going on my baguette pan. While we let these rise for about 20 minutes, I have the oven preheated to 450 degrees. I also have a small cast iron skillet in there. We'll be adding boiling water to the oven. We'll be spritzing these baguette with water, and yes, this is my orchid spritzer. We'll also need a cup of boiling water. This is gonna go in the microwave about three minutes before these are ready to go in the oven. And last but not least, we're gonna need to slash these, and I have a new toy. Yes, it's a straight razor. We named it Tweeny Todd. We wanna spritz everywhere on here. This makes the crust nice and chewy. And we need to slash these. Now we wanna go just ever so slightly opposite of the way they're twisted, but mostly straight down. This is why you need something very sharp. These are going in on this top shelf. We need to carefully pour that cup of boiling water into the little skillet and then close the door immediately. That traps the steam and keeps you from steam burning your face, which I've done before. Using this baguette pan does give the bottom of these baguettes their classic stippled look. Of course, you could do this without using a baguette pan, but it does help to retain the shape and give it its nice brown color. Now, if your baguette are not browning up, do not be afraid to bump your oven up to 475 degrees. Bread is better slightly overdone than underdone. Let's give these a taste. I'm cutting this on the bias. I have my baguette topped with hot artichoke heart dip. If you'd like to see how I made that, the link is at the end of this video. I know this is good, it smells spectacular. Mm. I don't know which one's better. Thank you for visiting Larissa's Kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, give the like button a click and don't forget to leave a comment. We're always happy to hear from you. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and don't keep us a secret. Share our videos with your friends and family. You can follow us on Facebook for behind the scenes pics and videos and on Twitter for upcoming videos and the random cat picture.